welcome back to The Human Perspective. Today, um, I have the honor of being able to interview Steve Way. Welcome to our program, Steve. Thank you for having me. So Steve is a comedian. And I'm wondering, Steve, could you share a little information with us about what got you into comedy and into theater? Growing up, I've always used comedy as a, I guess, a coping mechanism for my disability. Uh, you know, I'd always try to make fun of it, make light of it. Um, you know, always just try to find like the humor side of things. Um, and my friends and family were always in on the jokes. So it was never, uh, like offensive or anything like that. So, uh, one day, about nine years ago, uh, during the summer, so right around now, actually, um, my friend, Rami Youssef, uh, at the time was producing a comedy show in our hometown of Rutherford. And he told me to just write a stand up set. So two weeks after that, uh, he came over. I said, hey, here it is. And he read it and said, great, you're going to perform it at the show. And that was really just the beginning of my stand-up career. Were you nervous when you did your first performance? No, not at all. I've been public speaking since I was 10 years old. So being on stage um, is something that just feels natural to me at this point. And I've always, I've always been comfortable making fun of my disability. So to combine the two, it really felt right. Um, have you found that the way you talk about your disability enables people to engage and ask you questions that they might not otherwise ask, but helps facilitate them seeing you as an equal person? Absolutely. It definitely makes them more comfortable uh, about me and my condition and really just people with disabilities all together. You know, I, I could tell that whenever I perform in front of a new audience, I, I can sense how uncomfortable they are because they're not really sure if they can laugh or not. And really, you know, just because of how uh, negatively the media portrays us, you know, they've never heard like a person with a disability speak like that or say things like that. So on top of being uncomfortable, it's also a shock to them. But once they, you know, get over that, then they'll loosen up. They open up and they get it and they understand. And, you know, they realize, oh, I can laugh at him. Mm-hmm. So he's telling jokes about his life and his problems, just like every other comedian. You know, okay. just because I don't have a disability doesn't mean that I can't relate with him. And so it's really, I would imagine, also laughing with you and not necessarily at you. Oh, yes, they're, they're always laughing with me, definitely. Yeah, I think stories around disability are very funny, and not obviously always, but with someone like yourself, you know, who can tell things in a comedic way, I think it, for me, it's always felt like the disability community is laughing for one reason and the non-disability community is laughing for another reason. Yeah, it's absolutely. So um, you've been in this field now about seven, eight years, mm-hmm. and we're seeing a slow um, number of people with disabilities who are performing. What do you see as some of the barriers that we still need to overcome? I really, I think we still have to overcome every barrier. I don't think any barrier has come down. Um, I think a few of us have just finally been given a chance that we should have had all along. Um, You know, cast and directors, still won't cast people with disabilities just because of their preconceived notions of, you know, who we are as performers. 
we still have non-disabled writers writing disabled roles. And we're still having non-disabled actors play disabled roles. So until we can stop all of those things, that's just the bare minimum of what needs to be done. Because we still need to have uh, disabled directors, disabled producers, um, more marginalized people need to have the opportunity. You know, because yes, I'm a performer, I'm on a TV show, but I'm a straight white guy. You know, I don't know what it's like to be disabled and black, disabled and gay, disabled and trans. But there are those people out there, but they are not given the opportunity. And until that happens, then we can have true change in the industry. Congratulations that Grammy is going into its second year. Are you going to? Be- yes, it's great, right? Are you that, going? Uh, that job security feels really good. Um, are you going to be playing a bigger role in the next year's production? I hope so. I really do. Um, just going off of uh, the show's reviews, um, I think. My character was, uh, important, you know, because you're seeing a disabled character, but we don't talk about my disability. I'm just there as Rami's friend. Um, wait, I don't, I don't even think the words muscular dystrophy are ever said, or if it is, it's only once. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, I, I think it's a great example of how you can have a disabled character as just that. You know, it doesn't matter uh, what he has, how it affects him. You know, he's still going to live his life the way that he wants. The, one of the scenes where uh, you and Rami, well, he gets stoned and you go home and meet with um, your mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, was pretty raw and I'm wondering what first of all did that experience ever really happen with your mother um and what did you feel about it well you know I think the best way to describe it is that the situations are not real but the emotions and the feelings are so you know obviously that never happened But, of course, we've talked about it. You know, of course, we've talked about my death. I mean, you know, I've I've almost died a couple times. So how could that not come up? Mm -hmm. Um, When I first read it, I was horrified. Absolutely horrified. Uh, Maybe so uncomfortable. And then about an hour later, I read it again. And I thought, oh, my goodness. This is absolutely brilliant. And what, what I really liked about it was just uh, the absurdity of the situation. You know, how we're talking about my death, which as, you know, a disabled person is very real. You know, we lose friends all the time. Um, we cannot not talk about it. But to do it in that way of Rami having that uh, experience for the first time, I I think is the perfect way to pull that off. I hear that you may be involved in another production, something that you're writing. Can you talk about it at all? Yeah, basically I'm just trying to get a show made about my life. Uh, my experiences, um, just to sh- show what it's like being disabled in America and, you know, just dealing with all the struggles that we go through, but from my perspective. Do you envision a day where you may be supporting yourself completely as an actor, comedian? I mean, that's the ultimate goal. 
you know, it, it's hard, but um, if I can pull that off, then I would be extremely lucky. And, you know, I think it would really then be up to me to try to make that the norm for people with disabilities and disabled performers. Because, you know, it's something uh, that we all should be able to experience. Do you ever speak with children or adults who have disabilities or don't have disabilities about the arts? And what messages do you have? I think in particular, both the parents who have children with disabilities, as well as disabled people um, who are thinking about becoming more engaged in theater. Yeah, I always tell them to just do it. You know, just have fun with it. Um, find your voice. You know, if you can't find something out there, then make your own. You know, it's very hard for a wheelchair using comedian to do stand up comedy in New York City. Um, you know, there are very few comedy venues where I can perform at. Like, because of the accessibility. Yes, yeah, exactly. But that never stops me. You know, I always tried to find every accessible venue that I could and perform there. Um, and whenever there weren't times I could do that, I would try to make my own show uh, and perform on that. So, you know, I think it's really important to create not just your own work, but your own situations that you can control and that are not at the mercy of stairs. Well, I can't believe it, but once again, we're finishing up this interview. But I really, I will put information up about you that people can link into. Uh, Rami's on Hulu, and I really encourage people to look at this and to share it with your friends. And it's been great for me to get an opportunity to speak with you again and to share the great work that you're doing. And you know, your humor is quite cutting. And um, I, I really personally appreciate it. So thank you very much. We'll talk again and have a good day. And thank you everyone for watching.